Hi, welcome back for today's movie recap. Today, we will recap the movie, Separation. Eight-year-old Jenny was playing with her creepy puppets in the attic while her father, Jeff, was showing his work to the babysitter, Samantha Nally. Jenny sat by the attic window when a bird bumped into it, startling her and causing her to fall. Jenny managed to grab hold of the attic board but fell when she lost her grip. Her mother, Maggie, who just got back from work, heard her cries and rushed to the attic, followed by Jeff and Samantha. Maggie and Jeff had been having marriage problems, they had been fighting a lot, and this accident was the triggering point as Maggie finally decided to divorce Jeff. During the divorce case, Jeff and Maggie fought for custody over Jenny, which Maggie won in the end as not only did she have a better job, Jenny also got into an accident in the presence of her father, who was supposed to take care of her. Maggie told Jeff to fix his life and gave him a chance to fix his life just as long as he agreed with Maggie's agreements, but Jeff refused. Maggie then left with Jenny, leaving Jeff to go back home alone, where he watched videos of his once happy family. The next day, Jeff was allowed to take his daughter out and he brought her to a cafe where the two of them bonded by drawing. Jeff met an old college friend, Connor. The two of them caught up with each other when Maggie called Jeff. Jeff learned that Maggie and Jenny were moving to Seattle for Maggie's job and Jeff got angry as he wouldn't be able to see his daughter again. Jeff and Maggie started arguing and Maggie got so wrapped up in the argument that she didn't notice a car coming, resulting in a tragic hit and run that took her life. The funeral was held in Maggie's home where Jeff and Maggie's father, Paul, had a hushed disagreement. Jenny was acting weird as she spread tomato sauce on the wall with her hands. Jeff saw what Jenny was doing and told her to stop. When Jenny didn't listen, Jeff raised his voice, and Jenny walked away as she told her father that she wanted her mommy back, gaining the attention of the guests. Samantha approached Jeff to comfort him before looking for Jenny. Jeff then stood at the center and gave his eulogy speech. During his eulogy, a candle on top of a dresser fell down, accidentally lighting the family painting on fire. Due to the small fire, only Jeff's face in the painting got distorted as Samantha extinguished the fire quickly, and Jeff could only stare at the painting. Once the other guests had gone, Paul asked Jeff what he wanted to do with Jenny now that Maggie was gone. Paul threatened Jenny to do what was best for her, or she was going to take Jenny from him. Jeff carried the painting upstairs when he heard a sound coming from Jenny's room. He opened the door and saw that Jenny was asleep with her gadget playing a close-up video of a creepy puppet. Jeff tried to turn it off but it didn't. He was confused as he tried again, and when it finally turned off, he shrugged it off and left Jenny's room. In the attic, the lights turned on by themselves, and when Jeff walked out of his room, he saw the door at the other end of the hallway opening slightly. A hand reached out of the slightly open jar, which then opened widely, revealing a creepy contortionist. The contortionist broke his bones and crawled backward towards Jeff, who fell to the floor in fear as the contortionist slowly reached him. Jeff woke up and was relieved that it was just a dream, but that relief turned to fear again as he saw another creepy figure by the window. The figure suddenly turned its neck to look at him, and Jeff jumped awake again. Jeff was staring at Jenny when he heard the alarm indicating that the food he was cooking was burning. He quickly put the pan in the sink, letting the faucet cool it down, and turned off the stove. He decided to just order food and tried to talk to Jenny, who just put on her headset, ignoring him. Paul visited them to inform them about the petition for custody of Jenny. Paul and Jeff got into an argument, as Paul wanted to take Jenny away from Jeff, just like Maggie wanted. Due to their arguing, Jenny locked herself up in her room, and Jeff put the tray of her food on the floor and apologized before leaving. Jeff went to Connor's comic book company, where she met Alan, Connor's partner. Jeff waited for the two to finish their discussion before he told Connor that he was accepting the inking job Connor offered him back at the cafe. Back home, Jeff was working on the desk when he noticed something outside the window. He looked out to see what it was and went back to working when he saw nothing. But then Jeff suddenly seemed to blank out and start mindlessly drawing. When he finally snapped out of it, he saw that he had drawn a creepy, dark figure. Jeff was startled as Jenny called him, and he turned to look at her daughter, who told him that she heard something in her room. Jeff checked Jenny's room but found nothing. He sat down on Jenny's bed and told the young girl about his new job, promising that he was never going to give Jenny away. Jeff then left as Jenny laid down to sleep. The next day at Connor's company, Connor and Alan were discussing their cartoonist, who broke his drawing hand. When Jeff came to pass the drawings, he had finished inking. Connor looked at the pages, and they saw Jeff's sketches of creepy figures. Alan was amazed and gave Jeff their injured cartoonist's job. One night, Jeff was working when Jenny, who was already sleeping, woke up to see an outstretched arm pointing at the window. Jenny looked out the window and saw a dark figure stalking towards her. She screamed for her father, and Jeff rushed to his daughter's room. He thought that Jenny was just having a nightmare, so he took her to his room and let her sleep beside him. The next morning, Jenny woke up, and Jeff used one of her puppets to entertain her. The father and daughter bonded together that day. Sitting on the front stoop, 
Jeff reassured Jenny that he really did love her mother. That night, the father-daughter duo was sleeping beside each other when a creepy figure appeared, looming over Jeff and Jenny. Jeff sensed it and woke up but saw nothing. So the next day, he set up a camera in the corner of the room so he could see what happens at night when they're sleeping. Jeff talked to Jenny about monsters and pointed at Jenny's puppets, who are the characters of Grizzly Kin, the characters of the art Jeff created. Jenny asked if she could befriend good monsters, and Jeff said yes. The next morning, Jeff instructed Jenny to take a bath but the young girl stated that her mommy told her she didn't have to take a bath in the mornings anymore. Jeff was confused, and when she noticed Jenny's sketchbook, he grabbed it and saw Jenny's drawings. At work, he was researching the weird things he'd been noticing Jenny doing when Alan approached him. Jeff asked if Alan really believed in ghosts, as the guy seemed to really like them. Alan then told him a story about how he came to believe in ghosts. Jeff then asked about the goal of their story, and Alan replied that he wanted an angry soul trapped in this world to inflict pain. Alan then stated that he'd seen things that he couldn't quite explain, and he believes that Jeff is exactly the same. Before Jeff could respond, Corey told him that Paul had come to ask about him. Jeff went out and followed Paul to the latter's car, where Paul told Jeff that there were no signs of breaking during the hit-and-run accident that killed Maggie, which means that there's a possibility the accident was intentional. Jeff brought Jenny to the park with Samantha, and while Jenny was having fun, Jeff was opening up to Samantha about his worries. Jeff saw Jenny running towards a puppet show and suddenly had a hallucination. Scared, Jeff took Jenny, and they immediately went back home. Jenny went to brush her teeth, leaving Jeff and Samantha in the living room. Samantha approached Jeff and kissed him all of a sudden. Seeing Jeff backing away, Samantha apologized and quickly left. Jeff was working while watching the live camera footage of Jenny in her room. He watched her talking to her imaginary friend when the screen suddenly turned back, and he quickly ran to Jenny's room to find her gone. He approached the open window, not noticing the grisly kin puppets moving behind him. Jeff closed the window and saw the reflection of a figure hidden under a black cloth. He pulled the cloth and was relieved to see that it was just Jenny trying to scare him. Jeff told Jenny about Sam telling him that Jenny was playing in the attic, which is out of bounds after Jenny's accident. Jenny answered that her new friend let her into the attic. Jeff asked about Jenny's new friend, but Jenny changed the topic by asking if her mommy was still with them. Not thinking much of it, Jeff answered yes and said that Maggie is always watching over Jenny. Once Jeff left, Jenny went to sleep, and the grizzly kins started moving again. The next day, Jeff rode the train to get to work, but when he got to the train, it suddenly went dark, and he saw the veiled figure. He approached it and reached out to pull the veil when it suddenly grabbed his neck. He screamed, and his surroundings went back to normal, wherein the people around him were looking at him weirdly. While working, Alan was telling Jeff about spirits that like possessing a doll and won't leave because they got killed and kept on relieving the same moment, unable to move on. Meanwhile, Samantha was babysitting Jenny when she saw a puppet on Jeff's desk. She stared at it until she heard a sound, so she went to Jenny's room but didn't find her there. She saw that the door leading to the attic was open and heard her talking to someone. So she moved to get into the attic but the door closed on her. She knocked on it and when the door opened, she saw Jenny standing on the stairs with someone behind her. Jeff went home to see Samantha crying on the staircase. Samantha told Jeff that she sensed something up in the attic with Jenny. When Samantha left, Jeff sealed the door to the attic and went to his room to find his sketches messed up. He went to ask Jenny about it. But Jenny talked back, mentioning the custody battle between Jeff and Maggie. He asked Jenny who told her about that, and Jenny answered that her mommy did. The next day, Jeff told Alan about the ruined sketches and showed Alan Jenny's drawings, telling him about Jenny's imaginary friend. Alan stated that it was Maggie who couldn't move on after her death. He handed Jeff a box, explaining that it could help Jeff talk to Maggie so he could make peace with her. At their home, Jeff hid the box in a drawer while Samantha handed Jenny her dinner as she talked to Jeff. When Jeff noticed Jenny choking, he realized that she was having an allergy reaction and told Samantha to call 911 while he took Jenny's EpiPen out of his bag. Jenny calmed down after getting injected with the EpiPen and the little girl watched as the chandelier's screw got loose and hit Samantha on the back of her head, rendering her unconscious. The police arrived a while later, and Jeff told them what happened. The cop saw signs of abuse, and a female cop took Jenny to her room to further investigate. While observing Jenny's puppets, Jenny told the cop not to touch the grizzly kin puppet. When the cop asked Jenny if Jeff would get mad, Jenny answered that it wasn't her father who would be mad. Suspicious, the cop went back to the living room to talk to Jeff. Paul arrived as the cops needed another family member and told the cops that Jenny's mother died in a car accident. Confused, the female cop mentioned that Jenny said her mother was murdered. Meanwhile, Jenny went to the attic and sat on the edge of the window. A masked figure, 
which turned out to be Maggie, floated in front of her. Maggie had possessed the dolls and copied the appearances of the grisly kin so she could still be with Jenny. Maggie hugged Jenny and tried to lift her up but the young girl got scared due to the height and went back inside. Maggie went to the room where Samantha was resting after the incident and wrapped the sheets around her to choke her. Scared, Samantha ran down and told Jeff that Maggie was haunting them. Jeff asked the police to get Samantha home. The cops left and Jeff told Jenny that she'd be staying with Paul for the night. Once everyone was gone, Jeff did the ritual of talking to Jenny. He asked Maggie to give him a sign when he started seeing strange things happen. Suddenly, the contortionist showed up and Jeff had a vision of the accident that killed Maggie. Jeff then told Maggie to let Jenny go, and Maggie slowly dissipated. Jeff woke up the next day and went to the preliminary custody hearing. Jeff admitted that he had failed as a father but he wanted to move upstate with Jenny to start over. He apologized to Paul for Maggie's death and promised to become a better father for Jenny. While Jeff talked to Connor and Alan about him moving, Paul went to his house with Jenny to start packing with the help of Samantha. Paul received an email stating that the driver of the car that hit Maggie had been traced. He forwarded the email to Jeff, who was busy checking the cover of the finished comic. When Connor wanted the ending to be changed, he explained that a spirit wouldn't just go away if you asked it nicely to leave. It might pretend, but it would come back once it got another chance. Hearing that, Alan asked about Jenny, and Jeff rushed home. Paul went upstairs to see the attic door open. He slowly approached it but suddenly received a call from Jeff who told him to immediately leave the house. Paul attempted to tell him then who the driver was, but then someone pushed him causing him to fall down the stairs and hit his head. Samantha went inside Jenny's room, where the little girl asked her what happened. Samantha didn't answer as they saw dead trees outside the window that weren't there before. And the sky seemed to have turned red. Jeff arrived and saw Paul, who was weak but still conscious nonetheless. Paul showed him the email about the driver before blacking out. Samantha went rushing down the stairs in panic just as Jeff was reading the email which showed that the driver who killed Maggie was none other than Samantha. A crazed Samantha admitted that she did it so she could take Maggie's place as Jeff's wife and Jenny's mother. Jenny watched from the staircase as Samantha broke a picture frame and threatened Jeff with the glass shard. When Jeff saw Maggie behind Samantha he said goodbye to her and the latter turned to see Maggie. Maggie lifted Samantha up and killed her by snapping her neck. Maggie attempted to attack Jeff but was stopped by Jenny, who ran up the attic. Jeff followed and saw Maggie try to stop Jenny from taking Jenny. Angered, Maggie went to attack Jeff again but was stopped by Jenny. Jenny cried as she told her parents how she just wanted her mommy and daddy. Jeff cautiously walked towards the window to get Jenny, but Jenny slipped, and Jeff jumped to get his daughter. As they were falling, Jeff hugged Jenny with tears in his eyes, reminiscing about all his memories with her. Everything turned black for Jeff as they were close to hitting the ground. When he regained consciousness, he saw that they were both fine, and the dead trees Maggie was controlling disappeared. After what happened, Jeff and Jenny decided to stay in their home. One night, Jeff put their family painting on top of Jenny's dresser and apologized to Jenny for waking her up. When he left, Jenny went back to sleep. As she was sleeping, a door opened, and the contortionist crawled out. 